Hey YouTube, Double R back with you. Today's March 31st. It's uh, late in the evening. It's coming up on 7 o'clock. 10 minutes to 7. Just getting in from work. Had a not too bad of a day. Just a, just a long day. And battling a little bit of a head cold today. I, that usually happens. I'm, I work outside and I think Saturday was like 30s. So 36, I think it was, was the high. And I tell you, it's bouncing between low 30s and and close to uh, 70. So I go through this every fall and every spring. So, but uh, getting into the garage and trying to figure out what I'm going to work on, I uh, got a few options. And I think for tonight, I'm just going to take it easy and, and try something a little easy so I'm gonna be prepping these frame rails for plug welding and there's some spots up here on the uh, trunk that I've got a butt weld and I'll, I need to prep that too let's take a look at the car I've already started right here on the top but just removing some of the epoxy and then up in that area you can see I still got to remove Part of the epoxy. I actually forgot to tape that up when I sprayed it. I gotta do the same thing along here and then up in that corner. And this rail here has got to all be prepped. These are just a, they look, looks like bare metal, but it's actually just a silver Sharpie. So got that to do and I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, remove the epoxy from underneath too. Last night, I played around with the um, fiberglass filler and mixed up a little bit. And This is actually really my first time spreading filler actually on the car, I do believe. And uh, I need a lot of practice at that. I actually mixed up a, a small glob, probably about like that. and. I put a ribbon of uh, hardener across it and I guess it kicked pretty quick I thought by the time I wiped this and went over to wipe the other side it was actually already starting to kick by the time I got to the other side so but I didn't need a lot here and I think this is actually pretty good I just had some imperfections right here and I've, I've just about sanded all the fiberglass off you can see where it's feathering out so i thought i was pretty close so i may go ahead and coat this with epoxy over here like i said i it started to started to set up and i really didn't need much over here so just a little bit right in that area so i'm sanded it and uh, i think it's about ready for some more epoxy primer so like I said I'm getting ready to spray my well through just on those bare spots and it may look a little crazy because I've got that tape taped up but I really don't want that well through on that epoxy that's going to be on the outside of the car and that may look a little silly, but the the plan is the plan is that once once the major panel replacement is done on the outside, once I get the quarters back on the car, I'll actually put the car on the rotisserie and do a do a pretty good sand on all of that's already there, and uh, probably sand everything with 180 and clean it really good and give it two, two fresh coats of epoxy on the bottom. Well, that stuff dries pretty quick. This here is a bracket that I did back in uh, February 15th this year. And it's actually been sitting outside on a, my little outside table through all that snow and rain and everything. It's actually holding up okay. Not really seeing any signs of rust or nothing. But 
that well through from what I understand it's it's fairly cheap product I mean it is in a rattle can but not real sure exactly how much protection it does offer I've showed this stuff before that's the uh, this is etch well primer. It's made by Medallion RS512. When my daughter's was small, I needed one of these cans shook up. I'd tell them, I'd say, here, shake this can up until that little ball in there quits. And <laughs> they would sure try. And then they'd be like, Dad, I can't get it. I was like, how long have you been shaking it? Oh, ever since you said, I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> so, there's you some fun to have. So, I just went over the, the edges pretty quick with it, just like I did over there. And then, of course, the bottom. It's got just a little bit in some of the pits. I don't know how much that's going to affect my welding. I may have to take a wire brush or something and, and get up into some of those pits. It's just going to be more of the same as I work my way around. Okay guys, April the 3rd, Friday evening, about seven minutes after six. Still back out here on the uh, Camaro prepping plug welds. Still battling the head cold, just about over it, but just trying to get a little bit done here. I'll show you the car. You see the frame rails are all prepped, inner fender there. Got the weld through. You can see the different shade to weld through between the epoxy there. And going ahead and, and getting this back part ready. This frame rail's done. This here's my package tray extension. I've got it prepped for uh, weld through primer. The reason I went ahead and, and taped it up is this will actually get another coat of epoxy and some of this you'll actually see from the trunk and I didn't want that weld through primer in there and have to try to sand it all off with the overspray so I just it's just just as easy just to go ahead and tape it up so I've got I got that taped I went over this with a little bit of wax and grease remover and let that flash and get ready to spray it with uh, my weld through I did get some of this masking tape, the yellow, and I've been using the green. I really don't like the green because every time I went to tear it, if I was running a line or something and I, I, I grabbed it tight and went to, to pull it to tear, it always, it was too, it was too hard to tear. And I really like this, this uh, yellow tape. It don't seem like to me it sticks quite as much. It's, it's, it don't have enough sticky on it as the green, but I mean, it it still sticks really good. And you can see I ran this line around, and as I was running it around, I, I held it and pulled it, and it, it ripped it ripped really good. Every time I did that with the uh, the green, it always, I'd always mess it up. I hate ripping this green tape. 
but I really like the yellow, so that's that's going to be good. I'm, I think I'm going to switch over to the yellow. And I don't know about you guys, but I picked this up one day on my lunch break, and of course I left it laying in the truck and on the seat and got all kinds of dirt and lint. That drives me crazy. So anytime I'm working, I'll try to I either try to hang these things up or or set them on one of these little little plastic pieces that come in the a case. This actually this came in a case from uh, house tape. I think it's called frog tape or something, but but I'll just lay my tape on it. I can't stand to get dirt in the tape. I don't know. It's just a pet peeve of mine, I guess. I did break down and order one of these cheap sanders with the belts. It came with two belts. And I think it's going to work out. When I first got it, I put a little oil in it and I pressed the trigger. And it didn't want to... Didn't really want to move. All the air was was coming out of the exhaust, and I believe it was I believe it just was too tight there. Cause if it give it a little nudge, it would take off. But I think it's just a matter of getting broke in. I, I've been messing with it some. Seems like seems like it does pretty good. I I tried to get it to fail just by barely pressing it, but eventually it takes off. And this thing is adjustable. It's got an Allen on it, and you can turn this at different angles. So it's probably one of them things you're not going to use that much, but when you need it, it's going to be it's going to be worth having. I'll also, show you guys one other thing that I got. I think it's going to work out real nice. Is this uh, paint gun holder? It's pretty neat. I've got a cheap one here that I just bolt to the bench when I get ready to mix my paint up, but this is actually one that, that you mount on the wall. And I don't know how much mixing I'll do from this one. Mainly just wanted a place I could put my, my gun at. And this thing actually has magnets on the back of it. I don't know if you can see them back there. But I just went ahead and mounted it on the wall, so I it, it comes with some bolts you can some screws you can mount up but I did at first put it down here and it I mean it those magnets are tough it was just on the metal door of my workbench there but like I said it was just gonna be in the way I don't really paint a whole lot in here anyway so I thought that was kind of cool a lot of these I've looked at online they look flimsy and look cheap but this one I can tell you this one is well built. I mean, it's made out of made out of pretty heavy gauge metal. I mean, it it almost looks like it's powder coated. I can tell just about tell that by the the orange peel that's in it. It looks like it's powder coated to me. But um, I mean, who don't like bright orange? Looks like Chevy orange to me. So and I like how. You know, the, the guns just lay in there just like that. It's got some holes here. I don't know what you would use in that. Maybe your uh, paint can opener or something. I was actually hoping these magnets, it would stick through here, but it's not, they're not that strong to stick. I was actually hoping they would. I may take, I may take it back off and try to get them magnets out of there since I'm not going to use them. Might, I might be able to take a heat gun. Looks like they're glued. I could probably use those magnets instead of just being stuck back there. But anyway, I, it's a pretty neat little little piece there. I think it was $24. It, it's not much. So, like I said, I, I really like it. So. Well, I just wanted to show you guys what was going on. And like I said, I, I've been dealing with a head cold this week, so kind of just wanted something I could do and make a little progress. And so I, I wanted to show you those those cool little additions to the garage. I'll, uh, I'll bring you guys back when I have some more progress.
use my first can of this medallion RS-512 on this restoration. So I just opened up a fresh, fresh can. I think this was 40 some dollars shipped both. And the lady talked me into getting two cans since I was paying for shipping and now I'm glad I did. So I've got one can left of that, but I always save my lids because on that first gallon of paint, when you first open it, the pour's always pretty messy. So I'll clean, I'll clean this out really good. Maybe even put some wax and grease remover in it and clean it really good. And then what I'll do, I'll actually scoop it out until I can get to where I can pour it. But it just, and then you can just toss these. So just makes less mess. Okay guys, about uh, 9.15, same evening. And I believe I've got the frame rails done i think they're prepped for welding and just have to do the trunk pan now and sitting here looking at the the calendar here on my phone and trying to get a game plan and got a lot going on this month so i'm not sure exactly how much time i'm going to have out here to work on it but i'm thinking i would like to have this trunk pan in the car by the end of the month have it welded and in the car, have the car sitting back down on the floor on, on all the wheels. And then if I can do that, then I'll dedicate May to that tonneau cover, get it back on the truck. And then June, I'm gonna pick back up on the Camaro. And when we get back on the Camaro, we'll have the doors to do. And then, at that point, I'll have to make a decision whether I'm going to do the cow area up front. I've got a, a dash panel up there to put in. And I've also got a new firewall. I think I showed you guys that. I'm not sure how deep I want to get into that. And then, of course, we'll get the doors back on. We can cut the quarters. Off. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish the back of the car and go from there. But I think it was last April is when I got that trunk pan. So I got that trunk pan a year ago. And of course, I took my time cutting it out and getting everything ready. And of course, I've been working on a lot of other things as well. So I'd like to have that thing in by the end of this month. So especially since it's just about been out of the car for a year. So anyway, let me show you the car. I've got my well through primer on all my flange area. Probably ain't picking up too good on the camera. And I can't tell you how many times I've been over this car, but I've took a paintbrush and epoxy and, and got down into here where I sandblasted it. And I could still see some bare metal back in there. So I went ahead and cleaned that real good and shot that well through primer the best I could down in there. And once I get the trunk on the car, I'm going to use that, uh, I think they call it cavity wax, spray it up in here, and that'll give me some protection. Same thing, I'm going to try to get it up to the, uh, the holes on the underside of this where the shock goes, and I'm going to spray it all down in here. It's probably way more time put into it than I should have, but to me, it's not necessarily about the time as it is just a stress reliever. And just I just enjoy working on it. Of course, I need to. I do need to stay focused and, and finish it. So just keep moving forward. But I want to. It's raining real hard here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But I want to thank all my new subscribers. 
want to thank everybody for uh, commenting below and uh, maybe maybe this coming up weekend I can get started on that patch over there you guys remember that still got to get back on that and then we can get into the package tray extension and then the trunk pan so we'll talk to y'all later